Hello and welcome to a special presentation from In The Money Media. Peter Thomas Fornital back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker doing something a little different, doing something a little special today. We've got a contest, contest jockey, contestjockey.com. If you're just joining us now and you're like, how do I play? I got bad news for you. We started two hours ago. We're doing an eight race contest at Santa Anita, but we've got four races left to uh, cover with you on this show. And we've got a ton of fun. This, this is uh, going to be really interesting to see how people play this. We're midway through, as you can see. And this contest jockey format, you can go to the website right now, contestjockey.com, and there's that little video of me over at the side doing the rules. I'll give you another sense of the rules now for those of us joining you. This is our best attempt to mix No Limit Hold'em and horse racing. You saw a format similar to this. If you ever saw our World Horse Player Tour show, if you never saw our World Horse Player Tour pilot, I highly encourage you to check that out. You can find that on YouTube if you look for World Horse Player Tour. You can't help but see it. And uh, th that's where this debuted, but it has been adapted by our friend Michael Novak, contestjockey.com. Michael was on the broadcast, our first contest jockey show. We decided he needed to focus on the running of the actual contest. So he's behind the scenes, but he is watching, and I will shout him out. But if you want news and information about the next contest jockey game, we don't know precisely when that's going to be yet, but it will be happening and happening in pretty short order, I hope. Go to contestjockey.com, create a free account, and you'll never miss the opportunity to play in another game. This one we've got a great prize for, $500 free bet on the Preakness. Very pleased to be working with our friends at First, First Bet, Express Bet. Going to give them a lot of shout-outs on the show including the fact that if you like tournaments, you should know there's a phenomenal one tomorrow, Illinois Derby Betting Challenge with all prizes added. And there are some great prizes, and it costs just 800 to play. And again, the, 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 the prizes come at no cost to players. That, that one should do great. If you're in Chicago, you can play at one of those teletheaters. If you go to the Hawthorne website, you can pre-register there and make sure you get yourself a good spot. But if you don't want to deal with all that, the easiest thing to do is go to expressbet.com slash tournaments and sign up in there. A little bit later on in the show, speaking of first racing, from first, we're going to have Bailey Armour joining us. Um, I'll be making fun of her for being late when she comes on, but very, very pleased to have her. She's been doing a great job helping out with some of the APR content, and uh, we had a, a, a memorable drink over in London where we were hatching some plants. She was there for that big gaming conference as part of the first team. I was there. I don't even know what I was doing there, but uh, but I had a lot of fun uh, getting to hang out, uh, drink beer with my English friends, basically, is how that went, and then some American friends as well. Race number seven coming up at Santa Anita. We've got a very, very difficult to down favorite here in the form of number two, Judge Miller. This is the full to Clarier, who has uh, been imperious in victory in all the starts. And a horse like this really presents an interesting conundrum for the people playing in the tournament. We saw that leaderboard before. You got a leader at about 10,000 now. The vast majority of the field still has a couple thousand left. What do you do? Do you, do you essentially just bet a minimum and try to get through this race and, and, and hang fire? Or do you hope this horse maybe drifts up a little bit and make a bold play? Here's the thing about this format. Similar to No Limit Hold'em, we have escalating minimum bets that you need to make. Think blinds in a poker tournament, but you can go all in at any time. So you have an opportunity not to double up, but to uh, you know maybe half up with the likes of uh, of Judge Miller in this spot. I don't imagine too many people will be trying the one, but who knows? That could be a case of uh, short field, long price, like the late great Jeff Sotman used to say. And then you've got two other horses in the betting who I imagine will get some play. So what we're going to do is send this out to Frank Miramati with the call, producer Mike, uh, Johnny on the spot there, as we're off. It's Anthony. California. Mixto out alertly. Here's Judge Miller up to take the lead pretty easily. Then it's Mr. Fisk and none above the law. By the stands, pace moderate. Judge one Miller five, cruises. Yeah. I'm not sure if I might see this. One to second, the gray is none above the law, hugging the fence, and Mr. Fisk is at the back of the field. Seven furlongs to run, and it's Judge Miller and Mike Smith, uncontested up top, leads it by two. Mixto, none above the law, 
and Mr. Fisk has three lengths to make up as they come to the six furlong pole. Judge Miller breezing along, a length and a half in front of Mixto. None above the law under a hold at the rail in third, and Mr. Fisk is just outside of him. They run past the 5 8 pole in the Californian, and it's Judge Miller, none above the law, looking to come through and try and put some pressure on him with Mixto three deep yellow cap, and Mr. Fisk continues at the back of this compact group that has less than a half mile to travel. And it's Judge Miller in charge, maintaining that lead of a length and a half. Mike Smith lets it out a notch now on Judge Miller. Mixto trying to get after him. There goes Mr. Fisk with his bid. Mr. Fisk sprints up alongside of Judge Miller. And these two go on. Mr. Fisk has put his head in front at the quarter pole. Judge Miller going with him. Two and a half more to Mixto. None above the law could not keep up. Three sixteenths of a mile to go. Mr. Fisk running a giant race has the lead over Judge Miller who's trying to come back, but it's Mr. Fisk with the upper hand coming to the 16th pole and he's pulling away. Judge Miller could not match strides. Mixto is in third. It's Mr. Fisk in a strong performance to win the California. Judge Miller held second. Mixto was third. Potential boil over there uh, in the contest. Not really a boil over on the toe board. I think there was about three to one. But Judge Miller appeared to be having things all his own way. But once the battle was joined, I, I thought he might be game there for a second. I kind of thought he went away rather tamely in the end uh, for a horse who was that price and, and came in with that attendant hype. It also did make me wonder. And I'll be honest, I've been I got hockey on. I've been doing writing for In the Money Plus. I'm watching the baseball. I don't know how the inside's been at Santa Anita today. It didn't look great there. I will say that. But I have a feeling this was just a case of uh, Mr. Fisk unleashing a pretty impressive performance in the lane. Seven to two in the end with the big drop down. Boy, computers must have loved Judge Miller. Knocked all the way into one to five. And uh, there are going to be people uh, not so happy with, uh, with that result. I'm curious what it'll do in the contest. We will wait. We will go official. And we will figure it out. So back to the format here for um, for contest jockey contest. They, they, typically, when we envision this idea, we thought of it more as a final table type of situation. A couple weeks ago, we did our Echo Town 8 contest, which ended up being the Echo Town 6 because some people can't read emails. Don't ask me. Um, and that was, I think 6 was too few. 10 is probably right. This is fun and different, doing it with an open contest. I think we got something in the order of 70-odd players. I think the gameplay is going to work. It's What's really fun when it's a final table is then you can see all those plays and really understand all the dynamics. Because we have 70-odd players, it's like we don't even know. We won't know until the leaderboard goes live exactly what's happened here. Um, but, yeah, we're going to figure it out as we go. And let's have you people, and there's a lot of you turning up here, which is wonderful. Let's have you get involved in the show here, especially before um, Bailey turns up. I'd love to answer your questions, and we can talk about whatever you want. We can talk about these races at Santa Anita. You no, know, I love the idea of getting involved in a uh, getting involved in a, in a sort of a live racing show. That's how we're going to do our horse player happy hours this year. We've had a lot of questions about horse player happy hour. That's a format that's going to be back. That will take place on horseplayers.com. Absolute best way to qualify for the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge, these horse player happy hour games, because it's just $20 for an entry a week, 60 if you play max entries. And then you'll have your opportunity um, from there to uh, win points. It's basically a regular qualifier for a weekend Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge qualifier, but it's also an interconnected contest through the year where – you can uh, you you can accrue points essentially and get into our finals. So we have two BCBC seats we're going to give away. I'm not doing the best job describing it right now. I'm not. I'm out of practice. But trust me, it's a wonderful um, it's a wonderful opportunity to qualify for the BCBC and support our equine charities. We're going to mix it up this year. Therapeutic horses of Saratoga are going to be getting some love as well as the TAA. We have the new. Leaderboard, <laughs> Chris Koppel's chiming in. Chris, who does a great job covering Gulfstream for us over at InTheMoneyPodcast.com. He's also going to be part of our monsters slash mini pods. I'll explain what those are in a bit. 
Um, put that, pop that back up there if you would, producer Mike. I didn't get a chance to read through. He's busted. He's out. If watching, if could hit that like button on YouTube. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hit us this, hit the like button on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel too. And uh, click that notification bell. That'll help you make sure you get all our Derby content and also help us when we go to advertisers, partners like First Racing, like Express Bet. So they're going to want to just do more of these and give us more free opportunities. Our current leader, maybe we'll reach out to him. He might be watching. He was a frequent watcher during Horse Player Happy Hour. But John Gasper, who's going to be in the team uh, that I have assembled for Belmont at Saratoga. Great to see his name up there on top of the leaderboard. David Garin, Dave Haig, Wes Kinman, Holly Spada. I don't know the, the other four in that top five. I do know Corey Molis, who's great to see up there. Very active owner, does a lot of claiming stuff. Sharp horse player as well. He has, uh, he's been on our air once. He was part of one of our failed experiments. We tried to do a live monster pod for the Travers a few years ago. One guest per horse and we, we didn't sound check it with the understanding that the uh, that the, the horseshoe next door to Brentwood was going to be having a live event. So we had to like turn up our mics so people could hear. And then there was feedback. It sounded like a Neil Young record, people. It wasn't pretty. But, you know, we had fun and we suffered through. And Corey, at least, was a great guest. Andrew Doherty, William Kelly, Don Brodeur, Dan DeTota, Josh Corin, Eric, Cost Eric DeCoster. Huge part of the In the Money family, as is Michael Domable, Jeremy Sussman, another uh, owner horse player I've had the chance to, to see a lot. I'll just do the top 20 here. David Barrier, Bob Deering, Jessica Paquette. Great to see her participating. L lying in the weeds there, getting ready to make her move. Tyler Gith. Is that a, an L or an I? Oh, my God, my eyes. Um, Tyler, thank you for playing. Michael Webb and Robert Vitale. So, uh, so some very good participation a great mix of familiar names and maybe people who were attracted by this new format and are participating for the first time. So you see Mike Proposi's name at the top there, another key member of the In The Money team. You know him from uh, the work he does on the In The Money Plus side and, of course, over on the Standard Bread content that we do. He's also producing. There he is, Mike. How are things? How are you enjoying the game so far? Yeah, it's, I love uh, the format. I think it's a really cool idea. Uh, the minimums keep you playing every race, and then uh, you, you know you have a chance to you know use your entire bankroll. It's it's live money, but it's uh, you, know, you have to bet every race. So I think it's a pretty you know awesome format actually. What I like about it is the combination of live bankroll but mythical money, a la the World Series of Poker. I love the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. I spent half my life talking about the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. I've loved playing it. I made the biggest bet of my life by far in the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. But, you know, there's no doubt that you, what you really need, I think, to, to succeed in that format, if you want to play optimally, look, there's a lot of ways to play, but if you want to play optimally, you have to be able to treat it like it's fake money anyway. Let's face it, a very small amount of people are able to do that. In this format, you have the opportunity, I think, to set up challenges between a true weekend warrior, somebody who maybe bets five, ten bucks a race, could sit next to Sean Borman, could sit next to Matt Miller, could sit next to Marshall Graham, and you know maybe horse racing contests get there. Sammy Farha, uh, you know, I'm, I'm shooting high here, but the Sammy Farha moneymaker moment where you know the the, the sort of uh, workman like everyday player gets to sit down with the with the pro or semi pro and and show their metal i that that's i think the dream here is to eventually create some kind of league some kind of series where we have the opportunity to to create a, a true championship final table i mean credit to the nhc for trying to do a final table and boy they've had some drama and they've had some fun with it but more often than not, the nature of that $2 win place format, you're not going to see the kind of wacky leaderboard shifts that you can see in a format like this. that are just going to, you know, as somebody who's a content creator, they're going to lend itself to a way to cover this that I think could really have a home on YouTube. So hopefully, Mike, we'll be able to, uh, to get something like that going when we put our heads together and, and, and figure this all out. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I like a lot of the thoughts you had there. I, I do think the, um, the idea of, you know, having sort of, you know, chips to play with instead of real money. I mean, it's, it's very difficult if you're playing the BCBC for guys that, that bet $50 a race to make a $20,000 bet. I mean, that's just not the, the kind of world they live in. Whereas this is, is far different. I mean, you put, you know, this is a free contest, but you know, if it's a hundred dollar contest, a $500 contest and you're playing with chips, then you're going to, the strategy is going to be a lot different. And, uh, 
you know, like you said, it just it sets up for a, a, an interesting game and uh, a lot of fun, I think. While we have you on, Mike, I want to hear more about uh, some of the stuff you've been working on, stuff you're excited about um, in terms of the comment you're creating, content you're creating, whether it's on the standard bread side or, or the thoroughbred side. What, what's, what, what, what have you been working on? Well, I've been doing a ton of things, actually. I mean, uh, we, we've been doing Harness Players podcast every week. That came back about oh, nine, ten weeks ago now. And, uh, you know, doing a lot of Fraser Downs, doing some Yonkers coverage right now for their big Borgata finals that's coming up. Uh, so there's... Uh, Great coverage every week there, uh, doing some uh, segments with the stable.ca. They're a fractional ownership company that, that works on the standard bread side that, that has well over 900 members and they have over 100 horses. Uh, it's been very a lot of fun promoting them, their trainers, uh, the people that they're involved with. So involved with them, we started a, a harness uh, players newsletter to, to coincide with the, the players thoroughbred newsletter that's uh, starting to grow. Uh, over 200 subscribers there. In the moneypodcast.com backslash harness if you want to subscribe to that newsletter it's uh it's weekly now and we, we have a lot of good content on there so uh check that out it's friday mornings it usually comes out so we've been hitting that every week and then you got me working on the plus side too uh doing some thoroughbred podcast get to hang out with nick tamaro kevin kilroy uh did some pause some pause with edison uh, just doing that thoroughbred side and uh, you know i've been a horse player for almost 30 years so this is this is my passion my love and, uh, you know, here I am and, you know, you're, you're using me. I'm, I'm going for it. <laughs> yeah. No good deed goes unpunished around here. And speaking of the plus side, for those that don't know, in addition to the extra content we do, the digest of all the picks, you and I both have spent good chunks of this weekend working on part of the Derby package. And we don't charge anything extra for the Derby package than the normal monthly membership. So if you were to sign up, you could just do one month, even 20 bucks, you'll get to test out plus for a month. And we're not resting on our laurels. We're still doing new plus content every week, as well as the whole Derby package. So that's going to involve grid picks, uh, write-ups. That you, There'll be a lot of free write-ups, but if you want to get all the write-ups, you have to sign up for plus. Specific betting advice is going to be part of that. That's always been popular. So uh, we encourage folks to check that out in themoneypodcast.com slash plus to get yourself uh, a hold of that one. All right, boy, I'm a little surprised at how they have tilted the tote board here um, in favor of Madero. This was a horse that was always going to be a favorite, but uh, you a little surprised to see one to nine on the tote board here. One to nine on anything is uh, a bit insane. Even, even the horse in the last race, I thought would be a bigger favorite than this horse. So, I mean, I think that leads to opportunities here, uh, especially if you're not, you know, convinced. And in a contest like this, uh, it really doesn't make sense to be, to be playing one to nine shots. I mean, you have to take shots. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen. I haven't looked. Eventually, one of our other ideas on the Contest Jockey website is to potentially develop some tools for players beyond what's needed for the gameplay of the tournament that will but that will help you with the gameplay of the tournament. For example, maybe at some point, I think this might require getting a tote feed and probably expensive, but we'll, we'll probably be able to get that eventually. The idea of having imputed double prices. And there she is, fashionably late. Coming the to party us. don't start till I sign on. Coming to us from <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky, it's Bailey Armour. Bailey, how are things? Oh, things are great. If I was any better, my tail would be wagging. <laughs> You're going to bring some Georgia-isms to the show. and that, that, oh, that's plenty. One of the that's reasons. what I'm known for. But, you know, you the last time I saw you on the internet doing a broadcast, you gave out a $50 horse in the form of Boutte Corche, or I can't remember the name of the Boutte Corche, and butchered the pronunciation of it too. Yes, I sure did. <laughs> well, we want another fifty dollars horse, is what I'm saying. You, you're not just turning up here for the for the party. You know, we we we're gonna put you to work and oh, see yeah. see what we can get you to do in these last few races at Santa Anita. But in all seriousness, it's great to have you here. Uh, have you been enjoying Keeneland? Have you been able to? I saw you out there. I think it was the second day of the meet. Oh, there's my a, dog, there's a story my friend. dog is guest starring awesome. to, with me tonight. This is Simba. Uh, oh, yes. Love the he name. Likes to get really close to my face for no reason at all. No, Keelan has been great. Um, they, I mean, they have such an incredible venue out there. I think I've been just about every day they've been running. I'm going to need you to find somewhere else to be. I'll leave Simba in the mix. We, we... He, he's so big. He will take up the entire camera frame, but he just wants to sit in my lap so bad. 
but then oh. he like he gets camera shy, so he'll he'll, <laughs> he'll just pop in and out. It's fine. <laughs> no, but Keelan's been great. Um, you know, had that really nice price horse last week. My pick in the Elkhorn won this afternoon too. So we're, uh, yeah, silver knot. We're we're riding pretty high on the Keelan luck so far. So That's awesome. how'd you come up? I just have to yeah, go ahead. I just have to commend the Keelan parking lot employees for the work that they're doing this meet, like with all the construction going on. And this is not like, I, I need to tell someone about this and you have somehow become the subject for this. I love it. They, so they changed the format of the parking since they've got all that construction going on, you know? And so there's like 80 gajillion parking lot attendees, every single person I've interacted with. It's like, they're so happy to do their job. They're happy to be there. They're always smiling. They're like getting along well. And now they recognize me and they like send me right on to the media <laughs> row. It's the best experience. And I just needed someone to know that. I've had run-ins with the green coats there. They, they have not always been my friend. Um, but in the parking lot, I've never dealt with anything but nice people. My, my best, two best green coat stories though at Keeneland. One was from, one was from quite possibly Bailey. I'm not joking. Before you were born. My first, <laughs> um, I went and it was a, it was a warmer day there sure. and I was in one of the fancy rooms. And of course, what did I heard my whole life about since I became a racing fan about what you eat when you go to Keeneland? Burgoo, right? Burgoo. Okay. And so it's a warm day and I've got the burgoo and I'm sitting at my table and I'm eating burgoo. And of course I'm suited up because we're in the Keeneland clubhouse. Yeah. And I said, well, so I, I got to take this jacket off. I, I can't be eating burgoo with the, with the you oh, know. Oh, no. And I took the jacket off and put it on my chair. And like, um, like a, like a, like a, I'm trying to think of the correct analogy. I didn't prep for this. Um, uh, it, mean, it appears like a, like a, like a vision out of a, out of a dream or perhaps nightmare. Yeah. And, just, and says, and I can't do the accent, but the idea was, sir, do you need help with your coat? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. I'm guessing the guy was like 65 plus, like, you know, soft spoken, kind of slow. You need help with that jacket, sir? Yeah, yeah that's he good. Was very that's nice. I mean, he was nice. He was just a pain in the ass. And then the, the, the time that I almost lost it, though, was a few years ago, early days of the In the Money Players podcast, which is, if you can believe it, if you count its original iteration as the DRF Players podcast, okay. will be will we'll have its 10 year anniversary this fall. What? And, yeah, isn't that nuts? That's awesome. Um, and we have seen them come and I've seen them go since, Bailey, let me tell you. But we're 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 carrying the the, the standard for the for the, yeah, for the carrying spots. that torch. But we were so I was there super early and had to do a show. I mean we're talking about like before they open, okay? Like before yeah. 11. And I'm there in the club. I, I was in the, I wasn't dressed but it was like, I wanted to go somewhere where there was no noise and it was a beautiful day. And I, mm -hmm. I went and sat on one of those outdoor tables in the clubhouse and I'm recording a podcast. I'm not joking. 1101, one of them comes up to me to roust me. Uh, wow, well, on air. Somebody somebody really industrious could actually find this. And I, I didn't curse. I, I was polite, just doing their job. I try to remember that, but probably the most annoyed I've ever been on air was getting roused from the Keeneland Clubhouse at 1101. 1101. I was, I was <laughs> filming something in the paddock, um, I think like opening week for Australia. And I was filming with the lawn jockeys behind me. And it was like a dark day, you know, before the meet started. So it's just me standing there in the paddock, like kind of awkwardly by myself with the lawn jockeys behind me. And there was a a gentleman giving a tour to this couple. You need to calm down, so he's really excited about the story. Um, there was a gentleman giving a tour to a couple uh, walking around, and so they come and they walk just into frame, like right by the jockeys, and they're standing there. And I was like in front of the camera, like uh, like adjusting something on my tripod and everything. And I'm not gonna be the jerk that's like, "Hey, you, like, get out of my shot," you know? Like I can wait all the time in the world. So then, but then I kind of had to stand there for like 10 minutes while they stood there and talked and they're like four feet away from me, just talking. So, and then finally they're like, oh, were you filming that? And I was like, I mean, yeah, a little bit, but like take all the time that you need. Like I'll, I'll be here all day. Like it's, it's fine. It's your so Southern like, manners that, that, like, that oh, allow you. you know, a, a, a New Yorker is turning around and saying, hey, beat it. No doubt oh, about it. Goodness, no. Heavens, no. Never. <laughs> I would never tell those people to go on. Absolutely not. 
<laughs> I want to shout out producer Mike one more time. We sort of gave him the bums rush when you came in here, but that that's Mike proposing right, Mike. so much great work for us. He'll be here behind the scenes helping out with the broadcast. Uh, our other our other producer, the man running the contest today, Michael Novak, will shout him out again soon. Bailey, I want you to talk to the people about your role at First Racing. First, they're obviously uh, helping us out today. We're doing this for a $500 Preakness bet. One of the things I want to talk about at some point is the Preakness future wager. But for those that haven't had the pleasure of seeing you do your thing, uh, what is your role with our friends over there at First? Um, you know, Pete, I really do whatever they ask me to do. And, and sometimes that's get in front of the camera and sometimes that's, you know, go to out to our different tracks and, and run a couple events on site there. So I work in domestic and international marketing for both ADW products, Express Bet and First Bet. I also work in international marketing for our American racing distribution side of the business. And then I do some on-camera broadcasting as well. So pretty much whatever needs to be done. I am the one that will happily raise my hand to do it. So I it's like been it. a great ride so far, just over two years with the company and couldn't be happier. What was your background before that? Were you were you in were you in horse racing? Yes, I was. So I was in racing for about five years before I came to first. So I think it'll be like eight or so years for me this fall. Um, I worked on the track for several years when I was in college here in Lexington. And then I worked for Equibase for three years, as so many people in this area get their start with Equibase um, right here in Lexington. So I spent three years there and then jumped ship and came to first about two years ago. Any unusual professions you had before your time in, in the horse racing? Oh, game? did you get a tip about this? <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm not saying. But I, I, uh, I thought so, you might have a story to tell. Oh, there are plenty of stories. So when I was in college, I followed in my father and grandfather's footsteps. A lot of people, for them, that would be becoming trainers or jockey agents or blood suck agents or whatever. For me, that was becoming a private investigator. And I spent three years working as a private investigator here in Lexington and then uh, worked some cases out in California as well. So spent three years as a PI when I was in college and now I am happily retired. No longer a gumshoe. Oh, but you must no. have. I mean, there's got to be some great stories. Can you can you share one? Can you share one thing without portraying any any yes. confidences? Or yes. getting OK, I will give you this one. I think this one is probably my favorite one. So. Um, we were working a divorce case for a client of ours and they were leaving their partner who, uh, um, I don't know, how, how do I like anonymize this? Uh, they were leaving, leaving their partner who was an executive at a large business here in town. Okay. okay. We'll keep it that way. Very, very, very big. So, um, our client had left their shared home and their partner wanted to sell the home themselves acting as their own like realtor or something. I don't know. I was like 21 years old. I didn't know how that worked. Um, so the, the ex partner wanted to show the home to prospective clients themselves, but per the proceedings of their um, divorce, they weren't actually allowed to be on property, like unsupervised essentially. So our client retained us to, go and like open the house for the partner while they had the clients. And then, you know, if we happened to stay in the area and see who was coming to see the house and make sure everything was okay, then that was that. So the, the partner was allowed to come onto the property at two o'clock one afternoon. Right. So I like park around the corner and this is me. Okay. Picture me like 21 years old, blonde, like very sorority girl. This is, this is why I was so good at my job because nobody ever suspected that like I was the private investigator. They're like, Oh, like that's just another like college girl. So I park her like around the corner in my little 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee that had no heat and no air. It was like, the worst car ever, but, but it's very under the radar. So I park around the corner and I come walking up and I see the, the ex partner and the, the first like group of people that are going to be shown the home standing in this like circle driveway and so the person goes, looks at me, like looks me up and down. And this person is probably conservatively 60 years older than I was at this point, <laughs> which is totally fine, but like two different eras. And this person looks at me and goes, are you the goon that's going to let me into my house? Yes, me, the goon. The goon, the goon. <laughs> the goon. So he didn't know. I didn't even have the keys to the house. So I'm standing there on the porch and it's like five minutes till I wouldn't let him in. And the guy like 
tried to fight me on the porch in front of the clients. And but then it all got caught on their ring camera. And then that was used more so in their divorce. So goon one, business executive zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. You're, you're the goon I want to call. When I when I need some muscle, who do I think of? Yes, that's me. <laughs> goon speaking. Yep. Very intimidating, very scary private investigator to let this person into their house. That's fantastic. Do you miss do you miss that world at all? I mean, is there is there and is there any crossover? I mean, hey, there, there you know, you 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 could see need for that work in this business. Yeah. So there was a there was a guy writing a book about um Al-Yadar. You know, and, and the sure. book is out now. We, I think the guy approached our firm to work on the case and like do some investigative work. So there is a little bit of crossover. I didn't end up working that case, which I'm like, man, I wish I had. Cause I probably like, that would have been such a cool story. Way cooler than, you know, this person trying to fight me on their porch. Um, <laughs> but no, definitely lots of crossover. I would say the stakes are much, um, much different now, but it was yes. fun. It was, it was a good ride and it's a great party story. As an, it is great. As an avid reader, I'll send you to an amazing book called Wild Ride. If you haven't okay. read it already, you you no. love that very much about the uh, you know the somewhat terrible story of of uh, Aladar and and what happened across the street there from from Keeneland back in the days of previous ownership. Let's talk yeah. about this place in Santa Anita with the one to five shot. With the one to five shot, I didn't want to. I didn't figure we needed to do the the deepest of dives in here. My my alternative to the favorite scratched. I wanted to kind of play a, a pace angle in here with uh, Lamborghini, who will not be competing. Can we beat this favorite at this point, Bailey? You know, Pete, I honestly don't think we can. I've looked at this race a couple times, and I think this is just such a deep favorite that I'm I'm going to stick with the chalk here. I mean, one to five. This is maybe not a race that I would use my bankroll on, but if you want to key that horse in some, you know, exactas or trifectas, I really like the look of the two underneath the three here, but I think this is a pretty strong and deserving favorite in uh, Maduro. Is that how you say it? Yeah. So, you say it. Three, so like a three, two exacta, maybe a three, all two, that, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, for, I can see that. That's probably what I would play. That's not unreasonable. Yeah. It's an interesting situation in terms of the contest because, you could potentially, you know, you, you got to start looking ahead at this point, I think, when you're playing in our format here with, um, you know, preserving bankroll potentially to have a, a big play later on. So it wouldn't be crazy to just use the favorite for a minimum, preserve yeah. that bankroll, and then have another shot as you go along, especially now at the sharp end of this contest when those minimum bets are starting to get bigger. Um, yeah, Chris Couples, our man says he would have. Uh, oh no, he would have gone all in on the two. So all he in likes on the two. Your, okay. He likes, your, he likes your idea for circle of trust. Anybody out there watching? And we see there's a lot of you, especially if you're playing in the contest. Let us know what you're doing here and uh, make us a case for anybody on uh, anybody other than Medoro who who might just be holding all the cards at this point. Should get a good forward trip. Obviously, done nothing wrong with the perfect three for three in the career as they are approaching the gate here for the Providencia on this very fun um, Saturday card at, uh, at Santa Anita. Uh, we'll get back and, and talk to you a little bit more about, you know, you were describing your role at first. Does it mean basically that like, because of the stuff you're doing on the ADW side, you're, you're just getting stuck into to Gulfstream and, and Santa Anita every day, as well as uh, obviously following your home track, Keeneland? Uh, yeah, I do. I do play a lot of Gulfstream, a lot of Santa Anita. Right now, it's a big Keeneland focus. But honestly, like I just really like to play. I really like to handicap races. I'm a big puzzles person. Mm -hmm. So for me, I look at handicapping like solving a puzzle. I mean, there are so many different aspects to it. So even if I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to wager today. I'm still going to handicap and see if I can be right. You know, I think it's it's easier to be right in racing than it is to be wrong. Now, whether you're smart about being right and actually profitable about being right, like you can say, oh, I had this horse after the fact all day long. But um, I don't know. And I think it's good practice to, to even handicap without wagering. But if you're we'll, we'll wager, talk about yeah. that more after the race. Let's send this one to Frank Miramati. With and they're off in the Providencia. Brand new dream in the center of the course. Here's Shiloh's mistress coming through on the fence, and they're joined by Pink Whitney, widest of all. Medoro's in some traffic early on and a bit keen. Inside of her, it's Circle of Trust, an English danger at the back. Four lengths covers the field by the stands the first time.
and it's Shiloh's mistress. There's room for Maduro, and Maduro gets that breathing room and is up to engage Shiloh's mistress as they move into the first turn. Brand new dream, two off the pace while very wide in third. Circle of Trust moves through, takes that third spot. They're followed by Pink Whitney, who has four to make up, and English Danger is down at the rail. On to the back stretch, Umberto Rispoli and Shiloh's mistress will carve out the fractions tracked by the heavy favorite Maduro, who's a half length back in second. A length and a half more to Brand New Dream covering Circle of Trust. Then it's Pink Whitney in fifth and English Danger. No change in the running order. Shiloh's mistress takes him into the far turn, leading by a half length to Maduro. Then it's Circle of Trust, Brand New Dream, side by side, Pink Whitney, fifth, five lengths off the lead now. English Danger is down on the rail. They're coming to the quarter pole, Shiloh's Mistress and Maduro. These two noses apart, Maduro on the outside, Shiloh's Mistress hanging tough. Another three lengths back comes Circle of Trust in third. They're in the final furlong. It's Maduro and Shiloh's Mistress. Maduro just in front. Shiloh's Mistress. Circle of Trust is in third. Shiloh's Mistress coming back on Maduro. Maduro, Shiloh's Mistress. Maduro, Shiloh's Mistress. Photo between those two. Maduro and Shiloh's Mistress put on quite a show. Circle of Trust, a solid third. Not. Not necessarily what you're looking for from your one to five favorite. I think the photo is going to show that the favorite's nose is right there on the line, but this is dead tight, Bailey. What'd you think? That was close. I think Maduro had it. What an incredible rally from Shiloh's mistress. I mean, that, that talk about like a gritty horse, a horse that really likes to run and put that game face on. I mean, he was not going to give Maduro any inch coming down that stretch run. Look at that slow mo. I think Maduro's, uh, I don't know. I think it's Maduro, but the nose is coming back right on the line. Well, we were like that? bobbed out of sync, so I can't tell. Okay, let's see. Here it is on the real slow mo. Yeah, I think it's just three, but we'll we'll wait for the judge. We'll wait. Yeah, for the by judge. a nose hair, got yeah. me. <laughs> the old nose hair, but yeah, that was a super game and likable effort, and might be less a case of Maduro underperforming. As Shiloh's mistress stepping up is, is sort of my gut. I mean, Shiloh's mistress had never set foot on turf and. On pedigree, I, I wouldn't have – I haven't looked at the damn family uh, thoroughly. I don't remember Ah the Dam. That's a funny name. Uh, being by St. Liam, uh, uh, the Dam, and then Vino Rosso on the top. Not one I would have picked as a huge turf move up, but, hey, a lot of times if they have the toughness to compete on dirt, they can transfer that form to the synth. Yeah, Maduro named the winner there. But uh, likable effort from Shiloh's mistress who may have a, a, a valuable – prize on turf in these California races by her name before it's all uh, said and done this season. Nice job by Freysu salvaging the situation in a race where Maduro, you know, had that trouble early and obviously had some anxious moments late, but hey, they get to get their picture taken. So I'm sure everybody will be happy about that on the earth. Oh yeah. No complaint about that. <laughs> so you mainly work on the, on the ADW side. I'm curious to learn more about the, the work you're doing that might be accessible to our our wider audience, where can where can people find that, or is that more for the international side of things that you're doing? So, uh, like the broadcasting work that I do, yeah. So I, that is domestic and international work. Um, I actually just put up a video today, so my I put my um, social handle in the the name here, so you can follow me at underscore bet bailey on all platforms, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, TikTok, Instagram, Threads. Uh, yeah, anywhere you want to get your your taste of me talking about racing and all the promotions that we've got going on on First Bet. Um, tomorrow, actually, on the Illinois Derby card out at Hawthorne, we've got a $25,000 exactathon, which is a new promotion that we've been running this year. So if you hit six or more exactas on the card, which you've got nine chances to do so tomorrow, you'll win your share of $20,000 in bonus cash. Split that amongst everybody that hits six or more. And then the players that hit the most exact is on the card. So if you go seven, eight, nine, whatever it is, uh, then you'll win your share of an extra $5,000 in bonus cash. Super so, fun. Yes. And, and you also have the, the big contest tomorrow, the Illinois Derby contest. I know you're doing in conjunction with, uh, with Hawthorne. Yes. Uh, yeah. and I love the terms of that one because it's, it's rare that you get to see an online – live bank contest where mm -hmm. the prizes are added 
but because mm -hmm. it's Illinois, Illinois and Texas, you can't. Um, you, the, there's something in the regulations you can't charge. Yeah, state law so different. It, it, exactly, it's typical racing, right? Everywhere is different. Yeah. But hey, learn where you can t put it to your advantage. Texas mm -hmm. and Illinois, when you have a contest, the prizes are added. So that's at no cost to the player. It's a de facto takeout reducer. So I would say get involved in the Exactathon. Get involved in this contest. Just 800 bucks. You can win BC, BC, NHC, cash, et cetera. It's a great day. And I'm going to do a special show. I'll, I'll do a show in the morning. Howard Kravitz and I will go over the, the Illinois Derby card. And then I'm also – I've got Clay Sanders from 10 Strike Racing one of our founding partners on the In The Money Players podcast. We're going to do a show about Keeneland. So loads of free content coming down the pike. Subscribe to the In The Money Players podcast, Blackfeed, wherever you get your shows, and you cannot, uh, you'll cannot you never miss an episode. So not a, interestingly, not a lot of uh, movement there. I guess I say interestingly. Predictably, not a lot of movement there. You have to wonder how different it would have been if anybody had taken a swing there with, uh, with that one runner who gave it such a game effort. But uh, John Gasper still... Uh, clinging to this uh, to this small lead over David Garen. And then, yeah, it looks like an unchanged, largely unchanged top 10. I do see Eric DeCoster, our man uh, who helps us out so much on the In The Money Plus side with the In The Money Players newsletter as well. He's got a move, um, made a little bit of a move up there into seventh. Corey Molas hanging tough. Um, William Kelly, Don Brodeur rounding out the top 10. But you can go if you're if you're not playing, but you want to check it out. Go to contestjockey.com. You can see everything going on. You can watch a goofy video of me explaining the rules, which we did a little bit earlier in the show. And uh, well, if there's no point in telling you you can watch the live stream, which you can do on there because if you're watching the live stream, you don't need to know that. So I'll just save that comment for myself. But anyway, there's the updated leaderboard after race eight. But it sure looks to me like there's all to play for with two races remaining on this card. We'll stick with you. Until the end, we do have a couple of scratches in this race number nine coming up. You can take out the three and the four as we get closer. Bailey, we'll talk about we'll talk about that. But uh, while we're talking about cool first initiatives, I do want to mention that once again, as with last year, the Preakness Future Wager is going to be the sponsor of the audio version of our Kentucky Derby Monster Pod. So the Monster Pod okay. concept. For those that don't know, we invented this, gosh, I, I don't even know anymore. 19 maybe was the first one. We'll, we'll have something on the order of 25 handicappers talking about 25 horses. And we're going to, we're doing each one as an individual mini pod video on the YouTube channel. We talked about the YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. You'll get all of those. But then when it's all said and done, we're going to stitch it together as an audio property sponsored by the, the Future Bet. And I'm going to go back and reach out to those 25 players, and they're all going to make bets on this Preakness Future Wager. Uh, is that something you got involved in last year? Did you did you mess around in that pool at all? I did. I did play in the pool last year. Uh, didn't go super great for me, but I did play in pool one that we had earlier already this year. I picked Epic Ride for trainer John Ooh. Ennis. That's a nice good. price of 99 to one on Epic yeah. Ride. Uh, and right now, a $2 payoff will pay $294.20 if you join me and played Epic Ride in the previous future wagers. So we'll see what'll come out of the next pool. Um, you know, of course, you've got some scratches and some horses that are, you know, kind of changing things around. But um, yeah, John Ennis, uh, a good friend of mine from my racetrack days back at the old Thoroughbred Training Center here in Lexington. So how could I not go with Epic Ride? Horse ran unbelievable in the in the bluegrass. I mean, yes, it, yes, it he did. Very, very fast pace, stuck on really well. Then got the form boost from Encino the mm -hmm. next, week, winning the Lexington. Mm -hmm. So I guess since you're friends with John, I assume he wants to run in the Derby if he gets in. So I'm imagining, yeah. He's right on that bubble there. I think yeah. the last time I checked and we talked about it, I think Epic Ride was at maybe 24 or 25. But, I mean, there's always, like, week of scratches derby week. So I'm crossing my fingers for him that he gets in because what incredible opportunity to run in the derby. But I also hope he wins the Preakness because of my future wager. Yeah. So Selfishly, if you weren't friends with John, the yeah, selfish selfishly, move, we're going to say, Get marooned on the AEs. Come back in two weeks in yeah. Baltimore and win Come me back my in two weeks. This is the horse player's mindset, right? Like you root for your oh. friends, but you also root for yourself. This is when you know you're like a true horse player. <laughs> There's the info up on screen. April 26th. So that'll be my target date for dropping 
the audio version of the Monster Pod for those of you who, who want to listen. Had some great content so far. Gabby Gaudette was terrific talking about Sierra Leone. Uh, I don't want to pick favorites here, but I'll, I'll just give a few. The first few that popped to mind, Duke Matisse, excellent, talking about fierceness. Randy Moss on Forever Young. Uh, we're we're going to have a, a, a whole bunch of, of great things uh, as far as that goes, so folks can can check that out for sure. My experience, you mentioned last year you didn't have any joy. Oh, we, me and so many others felt like such wise guys getting first mission at 7-1. to one. And then sitting there, dirt, uh, Preakness week, and you know he was projecting to probably be about five to two, two to one. You know, quite possibly the favorite in the race, and then he doesn't compete. And you know, the, you go from uh, you go from feeling like a, a king of the world to uh, to 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 you know just another downtrodden horse player. But we're hoping to make it uh, a little bit better this time around. As you see that leaderboard, yeah, we're hope we're hoping for good things. Do you remember who you played last year? Um, I think I was also on first mission and then was like, frick, uh, when that didn't go my way. So hopefully we won't have a repeat of it this year. Honestly, Prigness Week last year, it's so much fun. It's such an incredible event. If you haven't been, you have to go. I mean, there's nothing like Pimlico, uh, but, I, you know, a unique thing about my role is that on race day, I kind of get to see all aspects of our venues. So, but that means I end up walking like eight miles and I have yet to find, okay, so this is my gripe. I've yet to find the perfect race day shoe for women. <laughs> like I know there has to be some kind of unicorn, like white leather tennis shoe out there that you can wear for nine miles and it's waterproof and it's stylish and it goes with the dress you're wearing. So if anybody's watching and you have any links, any ideas, tips, tweet me. Let's hear it in the comments. Yeah, put it in the comments here. In the we'll, we'll, comments, we'll, let me know. Men are spoiled, especially with the new trend of these dress shoes that are essentially sneakers. I mean, this yeah, is the Colt Hahn ones that's like a, oh. a tennis shoe and a sneaker in the same thing. It's yeah. The best. It's the best. We have nothing to complain about. I mean, the wise guy move or the wise gal move for years has just been the, you know, big purse with flats in it but I, I you're you're running around too much to take advantage of that i would imagine yeah i've i've done i always have a giant purse everyone this is like another one of my running sticks is that i have this giant tote bag that has like literally everything in it you could ever possibly need the, first thing you get the whole bit yeah and when we so when we go on these trips i drive like my whole team around because you know i i love to be the uber and, and be in control so i rent this big car and drive everybody around but everyone knows like if you call shotgun you have to be on purse duty and you have to hold my, you have to hold my purse in the in the front seat of the car anytime we drive around but then the said purse weighs like 25 pounds so you don't want to ride in the front because you have to you be gotta be you gotta be prepared were, were you in fact a girl scout no i was not a girl scout because i grew up in the woods in the middle of nowhere um but i read the boy scout manual like front to back because my granddad was a forest ranger so always be prepared i can't do the like boy scout hand thing but um, yeah, there's a go bag, whatever it is. I don't know. There's a go bag in my truck at all times. I got my giant purse of stuff. Always prepared. I didn't make it beyond the, a wee below. I want, I, I thought about Boy Scouts. I think I went to one meeting and it was the most savage volleyball hazing I've ever Ooh. seen. I mean, it was, it was a near death experience from, from the, the, the older. Boy Scouts were playing volleyball? Yeah, it was like not volleyball, uh, dodgeball. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Me, it was like the, they they looked forward to it, and it was. I mean, these 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 teenagers. You know, I was I guess thirteen. These were older too. They were out for blood, man. They were head hunting. It was not pretty belly. Ooh, the five D's of dodgeball: dodge, dog, dip, dive, and dodge. <laughs> I mean, that movie? Of course, I I needed Patches uh, Houlihan or whatever his name was. Yeah, to, uh, whatever his name to, was to, to coach me. There, yeah, that was one of my favorite uh, horse names of, of recent vintage. Simba has really come up with a phenomenal way of photobombing you. By the way, he's, they, he's really majestic, and honestly, I think he's looking out the window. I don't know what he's doing. The uh, I'm I'm visiting some friends today, and their dog is downstairs, uh, and he got a little like social anxiety overwhelmed, so he had to come be locked in here with me. <laughs> so just crashed our live stream. It's fine. It's did you? I mean, the pose right now is actually very Simba esque. Was is that is that just a coincidence? No, it is very Simba esque. So I got him. So he he just turned seven um, last week. Turned seven last Thursday, I think. So I've had him since he was ten weeks old, 
And when I got him from the like shelter pop-up adoption event at PetSmart, I think it was back home in Georgia, I pulled him out of the cage underneath his two brothers and he just looked like a little lion cub when I pulled him out. And so his name was immediately Simba. That's awesome. Very regal. Very, very good stuff. Have you seen the show? Have you gone to, have you been to Broadway and seen the show? I've seen it at Disney World, but I haven't seen the actual Broadway version. Actually, but the Disney World one is good. Yeah, we saw that too. We saw that too. I, Perrin was giving me a spiel the other day. So Star Wars is, I'll tell you a ridiculous story. Please. Star Wars is still a huge thing in our house. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, my dad took me out of second, here's how old I am, Billy. My dad <laughs> took me out of second grade to go see Star Wars when it premiered. And yeah, which was I've just always, yesterday. You know, yeah, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Something that I, you know, remember to this day, it's something that I've shared with her that she loves. She is super pumped to go to Galaxy's Edge. And wants to like she's look she's been doing all the the tourism uh, investigation. She wants to make a lightsaber. She wants to build a droid. I asked her if the droid could help with the dishes. She wasn't sure, but we're gonna try. Um, TBD on that one. But where you know what I realized? So she's eleven. So I'm like I I have this narrow window probably of whatever it is two years where where she would still want to hang out with me that I can get this galaxy yeah. trip in. So I need I need to plan it perfectly so we can we can hit the the, the sweet spot before I become hideously uh, hideously uncool in her in Yeah, her very eyes. uncool. Like her friends are way more you know wants to hang out with them over dad. Yeah. And then she'll come back around when she's like 23. So you only have 10 years of not being her friend and then like the rest of her life, basically. So 10 years in the wilderness. That's what I'm looking at here. That's what yeah, you're 10 me. years marooned out to sea and then she'll come back. Like my dad and I now are truly best friends. That's awesome. Okay. That's yeah. good to hear. Is he a horse player too? No, he's not. Um, he, he loves going to the races with me and is a horse guy, but I don't think he really understands like how closely to follow the form. I've tried... God love him. I've tried to teach him so many times. And I'm like, well, what does it say about me? How good <laughs> at my job am I if I can't get my own dad to play the races? But I can get, you know, so many other people fired up about it. And we have such a good time. And, you know, playing the races together, not dad. He won't that's, do it. He's not interested. That's pretty funny. Um, we I do have another Star Wars related story. So my thought on the Galaxy's Edge thing is I have to find... I have to find a good weekend to do it that's not necessarily a huge racing weekend. I okay. think I'm going to target like MLK weekend next year because she gets the way at her school, it'll be a four day weekend. There's good okay. racing. There's good racing at Gulfstream and Santa Anita, but you yeah. know, I'll play it from the phone. I don't necessarily have to be there for that. And uh, and then I get to go to Florida when it's nice, when it's when it's when it's sunny. That's my thought. Florida in January is absolutely the way to go. I'm so glad the Pegasus is in January and not in August. Because yes. I probably oh. no, I don't think it would be the same level of party. It, no. would, it wouldn't. It wouldn't work. We'd just be no, not. That is a good thing to plug, though. I, I had never been there before a year ago. Yeah. And was just so impressed by how much fun it was. I mean, the racing was great. Uh, the whole industry turns up, which is fun. But even if you don't care about that and you're just there for the party, I mean, it's like if you want, if you want sort of a big race day vibe, mm -hmm. and you can get yourself into the, uh, help me out here, not the sport of kings, the the palm ten palms, ten palms, yeah, That's beautiful awesome. ten palms, great and, view of the track, it's yep. awesome. It's like a great racetrack experience. And then if you're just there for the people watching, uh, Carousel Club. I, I had I had such a blast in there too. I this year I did ten palms. Two years ago was was Carousel mm -hmm. Club, but either mm -hmm. one is really fun. That is that is another nice Florida experience. Maybe I can find a way to combine my Florida Star experience. Wars and then Carousel Club. Yeah. It, Carousel Club that bar when I first saw it in person for the first time. I mean, you want to talk about taken aback? Like that is just probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so beautiful. The vibe in there is great. Like everybody's having such a good time, and all the like unique vendor experiences in there. I always love getting to go down there at the end of the day, and of course the music and everything. It God, it's great. Pegasus is just such a good time. It's very. It's definitely worth. I mean, it's a ma it's a major. Uh, uh, and it's something yes. that people should take a look at. You mentioned the bar. It is an actual old carousel. Do you have any idea of asking you, committing the host sin of asking you something, a question I have no idea the answer to? It sure seems like it's an actual old carousel from like the early 20th century. But It is an actual old carousel. I don't know exactly 
how we got our hands on it. Um, but I do know that it was an actual old carousel and then it was refurbished and turned into the bar and carousel club. So yeah, a lot of, lot of cool history there. And it really is a sight to see the first time I saw it, I was like, okay, what, how can I get one of these in my house? Like, how can I make this at home? Maybe just one of the carousel horses instead of the actual revolving carousel. I think the whole revolving carousel in your house might be a little much. I mean, I know yeah. you, live, I know, I know you live large, but that would be pretty darn Not right. quite that large. I don't think we're we're rolling with that square footage out here in Versailles, but um, it is really, really something to see. Good stuff. Eight minutes to, or seven minutes now to race number nine. We'll get there in a minute. Let me button up the Star Wars portion of the conversation. Okay, back to Star Wars. We had, so this is amazing. You know, you meet all these amazing people, the listeners to the podcast, I mean, look, we love our YouTube friends and, 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 you know, they, they've been great to me, but some of these OG podcast people are just great. So one of our old school listeners works in marketing okay. for the Buffalo Bisons, Anthony Sprague, Buffalo Bisons, minor league baseball team, the triple A affiliate of the Blue Jays, I believe. Okay. I don't know how they, they must have been extremely hard up Memorial Day weekend. It's a it's a holiday weekend. They must have been very hard up to find someone to throw out a first pitch. Because <laughs> they have reached out to me and it's Star Wars night. Ooh. So Aaron and I, Susan is traveling. Susan's actually gonna be in Australia. Okay. Great for her, okay. not so great for us, but we will we will we will deal with it by doing like a little two-day up to Buffalo. And uh yeah, I've got a and what I realized is I don't think I've thrown a baseball in anger in about, you know, I used to play a lot of softball when I was in book publishing. That's 15 sure. years ago now. I'm not sure I've thrown a baseball in anger in 15 years. I've got to train. I, I'm not going up there and 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 bouncing this thing. I'm not going to become be angry. Is that a requirement? I want to, well, you know, it just, you know, in, in earnestness, in, it, that, that doesn't literally have to be anger, but okay. I, I'm not spiking Catch the thing. I'm not. I'm not throwing it to the on deck circle and, and, and getting featured in a TikTok video. I'm I'm right. going to I'm going to equip myself well. And if all goes well, I'll be wearing a Chewbacca mask while doing it. That's the point. That's good. Thing. You should do that. That's a good bit on Star Wars night. You know, I've never thrown obviously I've never thrown a first pitch at a baseball game. That's definitely like a bucket list thing for me. I would love to throw, I, I would make an absolute fool out of myself. I was never like a softball girl growing up. I did though in middle school. I qualified for the state championships in shot put and discus. Really? Me, yes. I, I, so I was a sprinter and then I like tore a bunch of holes in my patellar tendon in my knee, but they were right. like, well, we can't kick this gangly little, you know, 14 year old girl off the track team. So we'll just train her to be real strong and throw stuff. And, uh, and then I like qualified for our state meet, beat a bunch of corn fed girls from out in the county school system, throwing that, throwing that shot putt. We had a good time. That's if you can do that, you can throw a, a, a baseball slash softball. So we, we're gonna, if yeah. anyone watching, let's crowdsource this, Bailey. If we have anybody out there from the Lexington Legends baseball team, we've got a first pitch a thrower for you. I mean, they must have 40 home games. We can get this done. Oh, yeah. The Legends games are awesome. My my next um item tossing event is the Woodford County Fair on my birthday this year, the Jack Jewett House cast iron skillet toss. Wow. I will be competing in on June the 6th at, Wood at the Woodford County Fair. Have you kept your skills up to scratch from the I, district? I have. And somehow I girl bossed my way onto the Woodford County Heritage Committee at, that runs the Jack Jewett House. Uh, and I'm the exec or the, the vice president this year um, of the Heritage Committee. So we, we steward this historic home out in Woodford County. Um, that's on the National Register of Historic Places. And it was the 1700s farm home of uh, Revolutionary War hero Jack Jewett, who made a 40 mile midnight ride through the brush in Virginia to save Thomas Jefferson from being captured by the Redcoats. Awesome. Yeah. So we, we have these events all throughout the year, but our biggest event is at the fair and it's truly a cast iron skillet toss. So it's only open to women and they like mark this whole thing. I did it last year and I got beat by this woman who was a strength and conditioning coach at one of the high schools here in town. And this woman was so strong and so cool. And she chucked that dang skillet about as far as she possibly could. So hopefully I can beat her, uh, beat her record, but we'll see. Are you, are you going to try to, you know, use your PI skills, maybe get her a little bit distracted? Maybe yeah, she see what she's doing. Like have, I don't know, a, a bird fly close to her or something. I haven't thought of my, my distraction skills yet. We can workshop it. We have plenty of time, but right Good. now I'm 
hitting the gym, training for the uh, for the old skill of Extremely cool. I I do need to do some training for this. In all seriousness, I am going to do at least at least I need to go and like have a damn catch, for, uh, so I don't just go out there and completely embarrass myself. Yeah, go go hit the cages. We got three minutes here to talk about this next race at at, uh, at Santa Anita. I say we do it. Uh, do we it. have another big favorite here in the form of the number eight, Mana Rose. Um, is this a favorite you are with or against Bailey heading into this one? I was with the favorite uh, last time. I think I'm going to shake it up this time and go with uh, a little bit of a longer shot. I'm going to go with the number two, Princip here um now i mean i will say i think i'll give the favorite some credit this horse is ranked pretty high in a lot of our bet mix rankings top 10 win percent hit the board um etc so i think it could be challenging for princip or anyone else in this field to come out over mana rose but i like the way that princip has been training i like the the mike smith mark lack combo coming off that um that win last out with juan hernandez so we'll see what princip can throw down today a um, little bit of a, not too long of a layoff. I mean, it's been what, 40, 47, 48 days for Prince up here. So yeah, for, be in, in pretty good form for the modern horse. That doesn't even count as a layoff. And, yeah, and that exactly. was a, it was a nice lay. It was a nice run last time attending that fast pace and attacking and, and getting the job done. And that was a starter allowance. This is a straight allowance, but looking at the group of horses, this doesn't look like much tougher of a spot at eight to one. How would you, I want to talk to you a little bit more about your methodology in terms of we'll get to your, how you like to handicap and some of the tools you were mentioning after this ninth race at Santa Anita. But in terms of betting, do you, do you keep it simple or you win better or, or we look to get cute in exotics with your two runner? So I've been getting more into exotics recently. I mean, I think everybody starts out as, you know, just a straight win better. And I think that's an incredible place to stay for a long, long time. You can definitely make a lot of money there. Um, but I'm at a point in my wagering strategy now where I'm really trying to get more into like bankroll management and game theory. And, you know, how can I, if I'm going to go to the track or go to the, you know, to the phone, the ADW with X amount of money and I want to play X amount of races, how can I be strategic so I'm not just blindly, you know, throwing money at the windows? I would love to be able to do that. But for me, it's more fun. Like I said, like I love puzzles, right? So it's just about figuring out where you want to, you know, punch that ticket or maybe hold back here. So this race, um, let's do, let's do a trifecta. We'll key a try and we'll take eight over two, seven, and one. That's what okay. I would play in this race. All right. I like it. I like the two, your key to, to have some, uh, get some juice in that try. Uh, I like hard to figure the one runner. I'm surprised that he is as big of a price as he is. And he's coming off a little bit more of a layoff, this 104 day layoff, mm -hmm. which normally would give me pause when they're not bet off a break. I sometimes wonder if that's market signal I should be paying attention to, but gosh, you look at these last two workouts and, and uh, you know, I didn't watch, I, you, I could have watched them on XPDV. I did not, but right. I mean, five and 59 and two and, and, and five and 59. I, I'm just guessing this horse is going to be ready to fire at least a representative effort. It is unusual, especially for Baffert who catches so much money, how cold this horse is on the board, but I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to stick with this horse at, at five to one and, Boy, they just, they're betting Mana Rose like they have uh, tomorrow's newspaper. This, uh, <laughs> this, this son of Stanford who really did wake up in, in a big way on the, on the dirt last time. But I don't know. I, I'm sort of hoping pace wise that, and now it's off of such a long layoff, but I was hoping Sully might be able to be fresh off the bench and, and keep Mana Rose honest. I, I think the market is assuming Mana Rose is just going to clear and be gone. But, you know, no guts, no glory. I'll try the one. You've got your trifecta play you outlined, and uh, I assume you'll be betting a little something to win on the two at, at, at 8-1 to one as well? Yeah, of course. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> let us know. If you're in the comments, let us know who you're backing in here. And then we'll, uh, we'll we'll take a look, obviously, at the leaderboard after. We'll see how this thing gets shaken up. The people who've been sitting and waiting, you know, that you might be in a position where you have to go ahead and bet it all on this favor just to get in a position to try to make the winning play. I mean, I love – you talked about game theory, Bailey. That's one of the things I like the most about this World Horse Player Tour slash contest jockey format. It really comes into play, that idea of – um, plan, you know, it's chess match. You, you're, you're planning moves ahead. It's very hard, I, I would imagine, to get the job done if you're not thinking at least a couple moves ahead. Let's let's go to Frank. Perfect start. Mano Rose, very quick out of the gate. 
Princip moves through along the inside. And in between them, Sully now up to take second. Here's Hard to Figure coming through along the inside. And Hard to Figure up to take second with Mano Rose, the leader. Mano Rose, Hard to Figure, followed by Sully. Fifth Street is racing in fourth, but just two lengths off the lead. Then Princip and Pop Doro. Five lengths covers the field. They have less than a half mile to go. And it's Man O Rose just in front. Hard to figure, sent after him on the inside. But it is Man O Rose in control and starting to pull away. Opens it up to three quarters of a length. Just behind them, Sully is in third, swinging to the outside, fifth street, three deep in fourth. It's a gap of five back to Princip and Pop Doro. They turn for home and Man O Rose in command, lets it out a notch and opens up. It's a five-length lead with a furlong left to go. Princip splits rivals to move into second, but is no match for Mano Rose. Mano Rose, good-looking performance, wins it by five while under a hold. Princip, hard to figure, then Fifth Street and Sully in a photo. Cold try for uh, Bailey there. Good picking. Oh, cool. There nice. you go. <laughs> very, very oh, nice. Yeah, it's great, and you identified the value. I, I loved, I love the way you uh, you approach that, and I do think, yeah, the market signal was just very strong there for mm -hmm. uh, the, the idea. Sometimes you can like read into it the idea uh, when they just keep betting a horse like that, that like, and it's an uncertain pace scenario that mm -hmm. uh, that the eight was going to get that trip. Interestingly, did drift down to a a nearly not quite, but nearly backable four to five there in the end. So uh, we'll see. What happens? We're going to have a new leaderboard over at contestjockey.com. We've had a lot of new people join us in the last half an hour or so. We're going to be here right through the end of Santa Anita. So stick with us. But let me let you know that if you don't want to miss another contest jockey game, and we're not exactly sure when the next one is going to be, but it won't be uh, too far in the future. Contestjockey.com. You have a free registration there, and then you'll get the information about whatever the next game is. Um, also, if you like our act, check out all the content at the In The Money Media YouTube channel. We're going to be flooding it with all this uh, fun derby coverage we've got going on. And then, Bailey, what's the best way for people to keep abreast of all the great promotions you guys have? Do you need to look at first bet and express bet, or is one preferable to the other? Like, How do you, how do you frame for people the difference between the, the, the two properties that you work on? So the promotions are definitely eligible on both ADWs. Um, first bet, I would say the interface is much more visually simple than express bet. It's got handicapping built directly into the app. So if you're at the track and you're like, oh no, I want to bet this race and I haven't done my own handicapping, the first bet kind of takes the work out of it for you. So you can just go right in to the app. The first bet AI picks will show up alongside the first bet win percentages, and you can just make those plays directly in the app. Express bet, you know, there's a little a little difference there, maybe for the player that has their own idea of handicapping, but you can't go wrong with either one. It just depends on how you specifically like to play. So I definitely play on both if I'm on desktop and I want to look at, you know, a pop-out video or whatever during the day. I might pull up express bet, but if I'm at the track, it's first bet for me. Is it okay? So that's interesting. So on the go the simplicity of the first bet interface. But if you're, you know, we got all kinds of different levels of players watching us right now. Am I right in saying you're new, your first bet is probably a great place to start. And as you sort of yes. continue your journey, more mm -hmm. tools, more information, more sophistication in, in a certain regard on the express bet platform. Yeah, definitely. I would say first bet is a lot easier to digest if you're newer to um, horse racing or handicapping anywhere in between. It's like I said, it's really user friendly. It's really easy to use very visually. Um, visually self-explanatory is not the best way to phrase that. Like that sounds like a really weird term, but you'll see what I mean if you download the app. Um, and then of course, we've always got sign up promotions running. So we'll have some new ones around Triple Crown season here soon. You can go online and check all those out at first.com slash bet. Excellent stuff. All right, we're going to get to this new leaderboard. I'm not sure if it's updated yet. We'll wait for that little note on the screen from Michael or... Uh or from uh, well, one of the Michaels, my, Mike proposing or Mike Novak will let us know when this is updated. And then we will, yeah, we'll, we'll run through that and we'll see where we are. Cause we are giving away a $500 free bet on the Preakness. We've talked about the, the, 
the bet, which will be going live about a week from today, actually just six days from today, the Preakness Future bet. That's something we want people to be paying attention to. And then once we get through that, Bailey, I want to drill down a little bit. I want to talk to you about some of the tools available on the, you know, you mentioned the bet mix and you mentioned the, the AI picks. I want to talk to you about how you use those. And then, uh, you know, you've mentioned several times about the puzzle solving aspect. So what I'm assuming is that those are a tiny piece of what you're doing and that you go old school in some way and like to, you know, like to do the work yourself and, and want to hear what, what approach you take as far as that goes. You see the prices up there. Mana Rose returning 360 as the heavy favorite. Bailey's uh, clever price idea, five bucks. And I just missed the try and what that came back for a dollar, but I'm sure it'll cycle through here in a minute. Hard to figure the horse that, that I was interested in who uh, had a bit of a tricky trip there. 15 to one, not bad. 15 to one on that try. Uh, hard to figure had to sort of try to soften up um, Mana Rose. That didn't work out well. Got tired fast, but yeah. stuck on bravely for third to complete that trifecta. All right. I bet you very soon we're going to have that new leaderboard. We'll get to that and then we'll uh, we'll continue along. But we'll let folks know also, if you've got a comment, you you've, there's a lot of you out there, but you're being very shy. Hit us in the comments and let's uh, let's keep the, the conversation going because we've got an opportunity to, uh, to to chat about things. All right, John Kohran has taken the lead, 14,904. Must have been an all-in push, I'm going to yeah. guess. And John yeah. Gasper, Gasper took a shot there, right? He was up at around mm -hmm. 10,000 and has dropped now to uh, 7,640. But he'll have every opportunity to, uh, to, to get back up there in the top slot. I kind of – we've played this format before where you have different – prizes for uh, you know one through four or one through six it's kind of fun as a winner take all because it just forces this um outsized aggression which is going to be really fun to see in this last race but i mean everybody i mean a lot of these people are in with a shot now i, I have to say with this many people playing if you're further back than 20 you, you're going to have the potential of, of being blocked here and having somebody pushing all in on their horse with more money than you and, and you could be in that unenviable position of drawing dead. In fact, if I were somebody in, you know, 20 or higher, I might not just look at the raw math of, okay, what price do I need to get to the top? I might want to go a little bit higher to try to, you know, clear the barrier and, and definitely be able to get to the top. But then for the people at the top of the leaderboard, you also have a tough decision to make. Like, do you sit or, or do you sit as a, as a target for them? Or do you try to push in if you're Josh, if you're John, and and try to uh, you know really blow this thing out of the water in the last. It's, it's very interesting, and we've run a bunch of beta tests, but we've never run a beta test with this many people. So I'm really curious how folks choose to approach this. It's worth taking an early look, I think, at the odds board here, Mike. If you want to pop that. Oh, the leaderboard isn't fully updated apparently. Well, That's still fine. updating. Ooh, okay. I thought I. I thought that was uh, I thought that was final. So some of the things I'm saying may be incorrect, but depending <laughs> on where you are on the leaderboard here, you got a variety of prices. You know, I mean, it, there's a lot of people who can potentially double up and get there, uh, yeah. assuming those numbers were right. So you've got the two five to two shots vying for favoritism now, and then you've got what I would say really um, three other four other horses in the betting between the eight, the one, the four. And, and the 10. If you're way down, here's the problem. If you're way down there and thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just bet what I have left on these long shots, there's not that many. You, you are uh, definitely running the risk of uh, of drawing dead, but we'll see. We'll see how it happens. We'll talk more theory as we go forward. But Bailey, while we wait for that final uh, penultimate, I should say, leaderboard update, I want to talk to you more, more about your approach and the tools. So you mentioned both the AI tool and you mentioned bet. <laughs> mm -hmm. are those, are those things related and how do they factor into they are, they are related so the ai um the ai handicapping does come from betmix that's in the app and the betmix is kind of a suite of handicapping tools it's not just one product like some that you could see out there there's a lot of different aspects to betmix so i like to think of it as i mean really like a toolbox and that's what we describe it as. You've got different specific handicapping tools that can help you in your day-to-day -day handicapping, whether you know, you're looking at X, Y, and Z factors, you can create your own mix and weight the different things within the program. So that's what I use in most of my handicapping. Um, I, I do a lot of bet mix. Now, if I 
If I have to go old school and have to do it just off the form, I'm, you know, I can do that too. But BetMix, it honestly makes it just so much faster because it looks at thousands of historical comparable races. It looks at, you know, pedigree data. It looks at so many different factors and analyzes every single horse in the field, their historical performance, what they've been doing, jockey and trainer combinations, uh, and different things like that. So taking a look at this last race here, um, we yeah, we're looking at a little bit. So I, the main tool that I use in BetMix is called Bird Dog. Um, and the, the icon, so each of the different products kind of has their own icon. And this one is a, a pointer, which I like, like a pointer dog, which I think is really cute. Um, so in Bird Dog, there's a lot of different aspects to it. So you've got a pace cast feature where it'll give you a projected um, kind of digital simulation of how the race will go based on the horse's historical running styles. And then you got your handicapping. Yeah, 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 similar to that. So that's called it's called pace cast in Bird Dog. And then once you go down, then you've got your quick handicapping, your factor groups. So Bird Dog will take however many historically similar races there are with the same number of starters, distance, track, et cetera, and how the price is played out in that race. So if you've got a specific race type that tends to produce more long shot finishers, that's a really unique way to kind of identify those prices. Um, so that, that is all done within the bird dog tool as well. It looks at things like speed, pace, earnings, uh, connection combo, the horse's form, class, pedigree, what have you, pretty much anything you could ever want to look at bird dog will do it all for you. And then kind of spit you out a consensus and that horse's score. So that makes us decided on the 10 horse here for trainer, Peter and, and jockey Antonio Fresu. This horse has got a bullet last work, a fast workout since his last race. Um, it was a little bit of a tight trip last time, but a positive pattern. And then it'll tell you, you know, day's last race, speed, class difference, live odds, et cetera. So BetMix has decided on the 10, followed by the 9, Calm C, and the 7, Golden Eye. So a couple, a couple uh, yurtons in there. Yeah, very interesting. Eight to one top pick. Where can folks access that? That just sounds like a fun tool to play around with. I'm always curious about these uh, the, these tools that give the the sort of regular player a computer type tool, you know, we, we, in this day and age where we're competing in these pools against computers, the, the idea to be able to automate some at least of what you're doing or have a mm -hmm. be able to, and I love the customization element to maybe have it be like an algorithm that's basically like, I mean, the dream, I guess, is what you would have come up with if you'd had the time. To yeah, look exactly. I mean, that that really is what it is. So it's on betmix.com. You can sign in with your Express Better First account to access the product. Um, the pricing structure is all online. But if you keep your eye out here uh, in Triple Crown season, a little bird told me that we might be running a promo around Betmix. So follow our channels for that, and you could uh, – try out BetMix for yourself. But I definitely recommend it. It has made such a difference in my handicapping. That's how I picked that big price last week. It's how I landed on my uh, my horse from the Elkhorn today in Keeneland. And it it honestly has made a world of difference in my handicapping. I was going to ask you about Silver Knot. That's interesting. So that one came from the from the AI as much as yep. as much as uh, anything else. That's interesting. Yep, yep. Silver Knot came for BetMix. Uh, Bote Caché last week came from BetMix. Most of the significant price plays that I've had have come from BetMix. And uh, we've actually got a player, a big tournament player, Matt Bicky, who uses BetMix for all of his handicapping. Who I think. Uh, I know for a fact that he just won like uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $150,000 on a horse training contest a couple of weeks ago and has had an incredible first quarter so far this year. So I got to meet him and his wife out at the NHC. Couldn't, I mean, nicest possible people, incredibly knowledgeable about the game and even taught me stuff about BetMix and the way that he uses it. So everybody awesome. can kind of use it a little bit differently. There really is something for everyone and it's made such a difference for me. All right, here's the updated leaderboard. So Josh is the leader. That score was correct, but John has 2,000 more than was reflected on there before. Um, right. the leaderboard after nine with, with one race to go. Boy, there, there is so much game theory going on here. It, it's funny. In the end, in a winner-take-all format, it's a little different now if you have prizes for two, three, four, five, because people mm -hmm. would be – you'd be a little more geared towards your opinion and – wanting to play the horse you like and maybe willing to settle for a lower spot. But hey, if it's first or nothing, you basically are going to be pushing. There's no reason not to just push all in in a minute yeah. format. And you just have to um you, you just have to do uh uh 
you know, pick who you like uh, to get you there. Here's John Gasper chiming in. Uh, I think Josh will go all in and no reason for everyone not to push. Correct that lower than 20th, likely to get blocked. Yeah, I wonder, I do want, yeah, I guess you're right, John, because if there were, if you only were playing against six people, maybe Josh sits mm -hmm. because then, you know, you may, Jeopardy style, right? Like you don't want to bet yourself out of position. But right. With 70 people, like, you're you're and with only a five thousand dollar lead. Oh, there's Josh. <laughs> I know, I saw that. What are you drinking, Josh? I need to know. Inquiring yeah, minds. Know what's in your glass? Let us know in the comments. You you don't have a big enough lead to to get cute and 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 try to be defensive. You just have to you you, you kind of just have to pick the winner. And there may be a lesson in that in this format of being. Uh, you know, maybe when you're playing with a lot of people, and again, we haven't beta tested this at all, so I'm just making this up on the fly, but maybe you need a lot bigger lead because if everybody just sort of, you know, if everybody's in range, then you haven't really gotten yourself anything in into the last race. All you have, all Josh has gotten, it looks like to me, is the ability to play the horse he wants, and if that horse wins, he wins. But there's really no advantage beyond that, is there? No, I, I don't think so. I mean, you could have somebody be a real a real Silky Sullivan type and come from way off the pace here, um, if you don't know who that horse is. Uh, oh, they, these people know. They know. Yeah, the best California closer of all time. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Zenyatta I mean, would like a word, Bailey, but yes. Yeah, well, Zenyatta can take it up with me uh, and Silky Sullivan. <laughs> Tito, okay, what did you say? Tito's Lemonade and Club Soda. Cheers nice. To as well, Josh. Nice. Great, great choice. Great what's to your, have you. Uh, what's your tournament play drink of choice, Pete? I gotta know. Well, you know, I try to behave myself if I'm if I'm gambling. I, I don't I don't really I'll have a little whiskey if I'm at you know, especially if I'm at Keeneland. Um that now, is it whiskey sport. or is it bourbon? This is an important distinction. <laughs> I use whiskey because half the time it's rye for me, but I drink a lot of bourbon too. Okay. Um, there we that, go. That bar down there on the first floor has a lot of stuff that you know, I mean, yes, it's marked up, but it's more, so is Coors Light. And like, I, yeah. and, and there's whiskey at that bar that I won't see anywhere else. So I, yeah. I will drink, generally speaking, I'll have a little, a little bit of whiskey if, if on track. But mm -hmm. like, if I'm, you know, when we were in I'm trying to remember, yeah, Breeders' Cup betting challenge, mm -hmm. I, I think once we had, I played with Drew last year, and once we had everything figured out, I, I think I was allowing myself a little whiskey on the rocks, a little bourbon on the rocks. Um, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't exactly mix. I, I I'm, I'm convinced that, the, that at some point, one of my big moves with one of our partners, Bailey, whether it's you guys or, or Breeders' Cup is mm -hmm. going to be to get a non-alcoholic beer to sponsor, uh, handicapping tournaments because That's a good idea. I like that because yeah, you love to, it's, it's so fun to get after it, but the, the level of decisions that need to be made here, alcohol does not does not support them. It's not like, you know, you can almost justify it with poker. You know, yeah. you're sitting around a table with six people, and if you're drinking, maybe you can encourage them to drink, and maybe you can handle it better than them. And you you can sort of maybe make a case that it's not detrimental. But in this scenario, uh, it's, it could be. it's... It very it's, well could be. I did, though, for, for broadcasting purposes, I did enjoy uh, Patience and Fortitude, terrific Brooklyn-made uh, Pilsner from right down the block here. Yeah, okay. non-alcoholic beer. There's good non-alcoholic beer now. I don't want to it's name. The only one I know is like O'Doyle's. Isn't that a non-alcoholic beer? O'Doyle's. O'Doyle's. There you go. So see, I don't even know it that well. But <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't drank it in ages, but there, there's a, there's a craft. Oh, I'll just say it. Uh, Athletic is the craft brand that are kind of killing it. They're, they're okay. making some really good stuff that I have been on. You know, you try to mix in some non-drinking days here, but sometimes you just want a beer, and that's yeah. that has scratched the itch for me. But yeah, I mean, it's horse racing. It's supposed to be whiskey, isn't it? Unless you're unless you're at Ascot and then it's champagne and pimps. Yeah. Well, when I get there, I'll let you know. Let me. You, you, you're. I'm a member. You're welcome anytime. You, you, there you, we go. You, you be no, my guest. Right. It just well, got so dark in here. Hold on. I gotta go turn the light. You want to do a light situation? We we can. All right. Here we go. Someone in the top five is going to pick the favorite or second choice. Everyone lowers to pick a price. No advantage to sit when only paying the top spot. That's right. It's. Is it a flaw in the format? I don't know if it's a flaw in the format, but it is something different. Oh my God, it's like a whole new world. Yeah, I know. It's so I I realized that my daylight was uh, was slowly fading on me, so I'm just sitting in the dark on my computer light, just staring really hard. So I had to fix that. 
I'm in the bunker, so we, we've got the lights. There's never any... There, there would be the tiniest bit of sunlight if I didn't have that nifty sound dampener with the logo on it. Yeah, that's, that's cool with the logo on it. That's yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. We don't mess around here on the records. Oh, and the, big and the time. Whole. You need the equivalent with books behind you. Yeah, that, that's, I have that's... so many books, Pete. It's not even funny. <laughs> they would fill up truly the entire frame. Now, I somebody told me that a thousand books is like the qualifier for a library. So I'm like two fifths of the way there. Okay. Uh, getting there. Yeah, but I'm still young. Like I have, a, you know, a long time to to make this collection. Don't so rub it in, Bailey. Don't rub no, it in. Yeah. <laughs> now, this, okay, I shouldn't say this. Have you seen that thing going around Twitter right now? That's like, what's the like most memorable piece of feedback you ever got on your work? And everyone on racing Twitter was like being really snarky and funny about it. Have you seen yes. that? Yes, I have seen I, that. I could not. Re I was like, I know I have a good, like a good funny one that stuck with me, but I couldn't remember this story until it finally dawned on me yesterday. But now the like trend is over, so I can't t tweet about it. So I'll just tell you and everyone else listening about it. Please. So I used to give the horse country tours at Coolmore and had oh, the wow. had the best time interning there when I was in college. It was so much fun. Everybody is so great. Beautiful facility. But this is the year that American Pharaoh and Justify were both there. So this is 2018 Justify's Triple Crown year. And um, Fusaichi Pegasus and I were the same age at the time. We were both like 21 years old. He was born in 97. So was I. He was 2000 Derby, like super high stud fee, whatever. So Fu Peg and I, when I would go and like stop in that bar and I would stand in front of his stall because he would always stay in the back and it was good to like people watch him. Um, to watch people watch him like stand out the window and like be all majestic and everything. So I would make a joke about how Fu Peg and I were the same age and like grew up together or something. Like I didn't really know the horse, but I just thought it was a funny joke. And it always like everybody loved it. It was fun. Like we're having a good time on the tour. And then one day I got feedback from this woman because you, you can see your like reviews after the tours. And the woman said that I made everyone feel bad. Uh, for being old or something. And and that my joke about me and Fupeg being the same age was in poor taste and not funny. And I agonized over that for weeks. I was like, oh my God, if I secretly been being mean to people and I had no idea and I never saw that woman ever again. So whoever you are, I'm sorry. I hope I didn't make you feel that bad for being old, but Fupeg and I genuinely were the same age. That so tells you, let me tell you, that story tells you everything you need to know about her and her insecurities and, and nothing about you. It's a great line. And it makes me feel good, too, because you were alive during my uh, do you need help with your jacket search story. You were just an infant, but you were alive. So, yeah, you know, I, I feel, so now I feel young. Yeah. yeah. So it's a big it's a big win. We had that. We, we have. Let's talk about these this race. We've got six minutes. Let's have people chime in here in the comments and we'll let uh, producer Mike promote. Uh, some horses, and we'll uh, we'll we'll go over them, and we'll we'll talk about their we'll talk about their chances, and we'll give our opinions in the process. We we saw one vote from uh, Favire or Favire Favire. I'm going to say Funny Farm. Um, Lincoln Hawk. Lincoln Hawk is a cool. Uh, uh, I think of Lincoln Hawk as a class horse, and and he's won hundred seventy seven thousand dollars. Only mm -hmm. the two lifetime wins that 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 comes off the the page, and certainly interesting to see the not very common six furlong to 10 furlong stretch out. You wonder if that yeah. means we're going to see a little bit of uh, extra speed from this, uh, from this gelding. But uh, I'm assuming that, that one will be, uh, if not out there winging, uh, certainly in, in prominent position, which is interesting for a horse that has shown such a good closing kick. So honestly, I don't know what to make of the horse. Um, nine to two. I mean, I, for me, feels like just the price, but, uh, but, an interesting runner to to nominate from our from our viewer there. Who? What do you think of that horse? What did you come up with in here? Um, on the eight here, Lincoln Hawk. I think, like you said, I would not put a ton of confidence behind stretching out to ten furlongs from that six. I mean, they've tried him at just about every possible distance you could on the turf, going on the downhill turf, on the sprint here. Um, like clearly, they really care about this horse and really want to try to find a good spot for him. Um, I just don't know that stretching out to ten is maybe his his best spot. But once again, I'm not a horse trainer and I don't know everything. Um, I wouldn't count him out, but I don't know that that would be my play in this race. I think I'm going to stick with the Betmix horse since I've had so much success. That's the number 10 order in law. Um, but I also really like the looks of that nine. 
Um, and then if we want to go like crazy long shot just because it's the last race and and why not, let's go on the two Mo rewards. That is a crazy long shot. What what's the angle there? Is this something off the algo or did did you see something on the paper here? Uh, uh, a little bit of algo, um, fast workout since the last race, uh, ran fourth last time, just about eighth lengths, and then just slightly dropping in class, running back at 10 furlongs, um, with jockey Evan Malinato, who is one of the nicest people I've ever met. Super great guy. Um, this versus running style, I mean, definitely tells me that he could be right there in the pack with them, depending on how this turf course is going to play today. 10 furlong turf races. I don't know. I love them. I love turf racing, but 10 furlongs just feels like it's so far. You know what I mean? For American, for a lot of American horses. Yeah, for American that, horses, it's so far. So <laughs> in England, they're laughing at us right now. But for for in yeah. in the USA, you know, this is they're just getting going here at the mile and a quarter. One thing I do like about Mo Rewards that I notice is when you see a horse do something for the first time and improve markedly in figure terms. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, the, the, the master of the obvious read is, oh, they'll probably regress. And a lot of times it's the new thing they were doing that caused the figure improvement. And here's a horse on time form that did run a career best 110. I wouldn't talk anybody off at 30 to one. Let me put it that way. Yeah, um, they gave him that 10 furlongs and he said, give me more. Absolutely. Well, I mean, has to reverse form with a bunch of these, but again, 30 to one, why not? Uh, I like Maltese Falcon, boring, and, and this is a horse that's won for 14, had the chances, and has a lot of seconds, but I thought it might be able to pull a really good trip in this spot, breaking from that three with the closing kick that he's shown. Uh, mm -hmm. Leonard Powell, a, a trainer I, I always uh, enjoy following. Going to probably have to pass them all here, which isn't that easy for a horse, again, that's got that, uh, that's got that one for 14 mark. But if I were in first... I think I would stick with my first thought, which was Maltese Falcon, and, and hope I could get the job done. Very curious. You know what we should do on this one, Mike uh, Mike P and Mike N, when they pop, um, let's take a second. I don't know if we can keep the race – Probably, I'm not sure if we can keep the race call while looking at the plays, but let's look at the plays for a minute when we have the plays just to know at least what um, what Josh and John played. The, the players we've been following through and yeah, then we can NHC have, style love you. Yeah, I like that idea. What I want to do eventually with this Bailey, I think, when it's a final table, mm -hmm. is have let's say it's eight people, have them all on screen. Maybe you find yeah. a way to have the the race the size of a postage stamp. But I'm guessing <laughs> I don't know if you're watching what you're doing here, but I'm guessing most people are like me. They've got a whole second screen anyway. So if this screen was filled with people cheering and you're watching it on the other screen, like that could be kind of cool. And we might get some fun moments there to to create, you know, at some point I want to create some sizzle from this stuff. And I mean, obviously there's a way we're just sort of faking and having fun today, but I think there's a way to, to package this eventually in this format when it's a final table that could be like quite watchable to, to, you know, just general people who like reality competition type stuff. I mean, you talked about puzzle solving. What's a better reality competition than, than the hunger games of, uh, of trying to win a, a, a betting competition, a handicapping competition. It sure don't get better than that, does it? <laughs> Excellent. Getting ready to load here. You've gotten our thoughts on this. Again, feel free to, to chime in what you're thinking. We'll see if the tech will allow us to, to see these plays, but uh, we're getting just about ready. I, know, like I feel like I'm on the edge of my seat right here. Last I'm, race. I'm excited to see what happens. I, I And I go. love it. I love the fact that our that our leaders are both uh, in the comments. That's that's great stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens here. We'll we'll sit we'll send it to Frank, but we may come cut back to here in short order to uh, to get a look at those plays. But yeah, we'll we'll let Frank talk him into the gate. I, I, there's a few more horses to load, but I can take a break and finish myself. There you go. And they're off. Fast start for Calm C, who's going out for the early lead. Now here comes Mo Rewards sprinting up, and Mo Rewards crosses the dirt just in front as they come into the stretch for the first time. There we go. If if I'm if my mic is live, there we go with who has what. Let's take a quick look, and then we'll we'll cut it back. I love this feature. Let's go right up to the top. I'm most interested in uh, 
in what uh oh it doesn't give it in leaderboard order it's giving all the players oh, it's gonna be good. it's gonna be too tricky it's something we'll work on for well let's go down here all right so oh, so yeah, nine, right there yeah so nine john was nine scroll that sucker down for me there mike and then Jason we need one nine. more and then josh, josh is, is three. three so there you go we'll, we'll we'll watch it with that in mind and then we'll, okay. we'll come back and we'll, we'll figure this all out there we go we clear it better than gold and lincoln hawk down the back stretch and golden eye keen going right after more rewards more rewards but golden eye quickens things on the outside and calm c in between those two just behind them, one of these days is fourth with less than a half mile to travel. Then it's order and law. On the outside, a bee catcher, Maltese Falcon, better than gold, and Lincoln Hawk continues at the back. Around the far turn, that bid from GoldenEye, flattening out just a touch. It's Mo Rewards and Calm C going on with it. Behind them, Maltese Falcon is launching a bid in between horses, now going toward the rail as the field turns for home. Calm C in front, opens up three, putting away more rewards. Maltese Falcon is finishing nicely in second. And here comes Maltese Falcon on the outside. It's Calm C or Maltese Falcon. Maltese Ooh. Falcon. Big day for these connections. Red Baron's Barn and Rancho Temescal. Maltese yeah. Falcon caps off a huge day for Hector Berrio. You wouldn't have known. You you uh, you wouldn't have known that uh, the horse was one for whatever lifetime. Very game run. Yeah. And Josh, uh, he goes out in style. He doesn't. There's no. There's no game theory about who can catch what. It's just boom. I'm pumping it all in, and I think that that in a winner take all makes sense. You need to have the winner. You might as well go for it. No reason to leave anything uh, in the holster. A little unlucky from John, who I think played it right. But, uh, yeah, needed the winner of the last race. It, it sort of turned into, a, a, no doubt about the winner. There it is. Uh, it sort of turned into um, a, a mythical money, like, fixed bankroll contest there at the end, as close as the scores were. But that was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, um, Josh, make sure you reach out. And we'll get make sure you get that $500 win bet on, well, it doesn't have to be a win bet, $500 bet on the Preakness. Congratulations, yeah. Josh. And, yeah, there you go, Josh. Good work. Play it in the play it in the future pool. Play it in the race. However you however you want to do it. We're not going to micromanage you. Maltese <laughs> Falcon returns the two to one winner. Brilliant rider under Barrios, who really is, you know, notably excellent rider on the turf. Has that clock in the head. Seems to always produce the runs at the same time. John, all class chiming in in the contest in in the comments there. Uh, you played great, John. You you had a chance. You were you had the lead in the stretch. Uh, great. Good, good deal, Josh. Hit me up on there. We'll follow, make sure we're following each other and we can DM and we'll get you all the details. To everybody else watching, sign up for your free contest, uh, free contest, free account at the there contest. Contestjockey.com. I've been talking. You've been helping a lot, but I have been talking a lot. <laughs> uh, long day today. But uh, yeah, contestjockey.com. That's the place to sign up for the free account. And then... Uh, Bailey, remind people again the best place where they can keep up to date on all the, the promotions, et cetera, that you guys have going on. We will keep it here until we have the final leaderboard. We'll just for laughs, we'll read through the, the, the top 10. Um, but uh, give people the, the scoop one more time on the, the, the exact promo you guys have going as well as the contest info. Yes, so like I mentioned before, we've got that Exacta promo tomorrow at Hawthorne for Illinois Derby Day presented by First Bet. Hit six or more Exactas on the card. You'll win your share of $20,000 in bonus cash. Hit more than six. Hit the most Exactas on the card, and you'll win a share of an extra five thousand dollars we've got a lot of promos in the pipeline coming up here in triple crown season you can see all of those on first.com slash bet in the first bet or express bet app or you can follow me on your favorite social platform of choice my handle is at underscore bet bailey i'll be tweeting about all of these promotions about some courses different appearances where you can hear what i have to say and hopefully i might be uh, right and make you a little bit of money that's the plan anyway you've certainly been yeah. on a roll so uh, let, while we have a minute, while we wait for this thing to go uh, to to get sorted out, um, oh, this is funny. Look at this: the first contest, Josh. What? Is well, begin. I don't know if it's beginner's luck or if you're a prodigy, Josh. But either way, that's uh, that's fabulous news. That's awesome. And, and yeah, you won't find too many formats like this, but hopefully, I mean, obviously, you enjoyed it, and you know, there's a lot of other things. Maybe. Uh, 
you know, parlay it into this Illinois Derby contest. But while we wait for it to go official, I want to talk to you about sort of how you learn. You know, we talked about all the tools you're using these days and the success you're having with them, Bailey. But how did you learn to handicap in the first place? And when you do use either computer or pen and paper, what angle do you come from are you pace oriented speed oriented class oriented you obviously we didn't really talk about this but i know you know horse flesh a little bit too you look at it from that angle give me a little bit of an overview of your approach so i started playing the races uh back when i worked at equibase i had followed racing pretty much my whole life i'm from georgia like you mentioned so of course we don't have any racing or legal betting in the state but i was a horse kid my family has draft horses so i grew up you know watching the races on tv um, just like so many other of my friends did, uh, and then actually started playing a little bit when I was in college and, you know, started the same way as so many other people just with the form. Somebody taught me how to read it. And then I was like, oh, wow, you know, this is so different than anything that I've ever learned about before. It's so interesting to me that you can have all these different possible outcomes and everybody kind of has their own, like their own spin on it. Everybody plays a little bit differently and it's such a unique in the, excuse me, individual game. There's a pair of my eye. <laughs> um, so definitely started out with uh, with just the form and a pencil because I do everything in pencil. I'm not a, a cool like New York Times crossword and pen kind of person. Definitely <laughs> pencil for me. So that's just showing pencil. off. That's just that's just a flag. You know, I'm, I'm not that cool. Maybe someday I will be, but that day ain't today. So started out with the pencil and the form. And then as I got to know some of the different tools available on the market, kind of bopped around from some of those. And then now I exclusively use BetMix because it, it takes care of me and, and I really love it, not just promote it, you know, just because it's our company. Um, but it really is great. So did all that. Um, and then as I've moved more into the on-camera broadcasting space, I've really gotten serious about my handicapping and my playing. And it's just been a, a really fun ride so far. So I'm really enjoying it. It was fabulous working with you tonight. I, I knew from the time we got to spend together in Arizona and the UK that we, we'd have fun. I didn't realize quite how much fun. Here it is. Here's the final uh, leaderboard. Watch the winner getting that total almost up to 50,000. That's an impressive number. Yeah. Uh, just for fun, we'll read through them. Robert, uh, I'm going to guess he goes Vitale, but he could say Vital. And then Bob Deering, Al Santos, William Kelly, Sebastian De Batista. Michael Domable left some money on the bankroll. Andrew Wright. Oh, Andrew. I know Andrew. He works for one of your competitors there, Bailey. So we won't plug him too much. But we won't hold him against him. Nice guy. Uh, David Barnier and Jeremy Sussman rounding out that top 10. Thanks to everybody for playing. Thanks to the mics. Mike Probosi producing. Mm -hmm. Michael Novak for really taking this half-assed favor I asked him to do for me and turning it into something I think we're going to have a whole lot of fun with. Um, any closing thoughts from you, Bailey, before I send the show all the rest of the way home? No, I, this has been a great ride. Always a pleasure working with you. And what an incredible winner on debut here we had from Josh. That was that was great. This was really, really fun. I did love John's comment, too, here. <laughs> He's screwed now. He's in. He's hooked. We've got him. It's all. It's, uh, yeah, we got the hooks in you. So for the, online. for the mics, for contestjockey.com. For in the money podcast.com, for Bailey, for Simba, yeah. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatel. May you win all your photos. <laughs>